بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن النظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قدمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أولما أصابتكم مصيبة قد أصبتم مثليها قلتم أنا هذا قل هو من عند أنفسكم إن الله على كل شيء قدير صدق الله العظيم Respected علماء brothers sisters in Islam we have one of two options either you make excuses or you make progress either you make excuses or you make progress either you blame others or you take responsibility either you remove an obstacle or you become an obstacle you are either part of the solution or part of the problem there's no third option like i always say to the youth in islam you can be a child or you can be an adult you can't be a half child or half adult a woman is pregnant or not pregnant she's not half pregnant she can be early stages of pregnant advanced stages but you're pregnant you're pregnant if you're a child in islam we love you we hold you we embrace you if you're an adult you assume responsibility the problem we have with too many youth today in the world when you want to kiss them no i'm i'm, I'm not a kid yeah i'm big yeah yeah no that's my brother not me yeah that's my sister not me yeah so i'm too big for you to hold me and uh, kiss me and hug me uh, but i'm too small for me to embrace the responsibility and this segment of youth out there without a portfolio and a purpose in life has caused havoc Uh, it's known about the ostrich which is the fastest two-legged animal that if you put a load on it it's like i'm not an animal i'm a bird we fly we don't carry loads okay fly no i'm an animal i don't fly <laughs> so i'm saying to you my sister we have one of two options either we make progress or we make excuses the signs symbols of a nation and an individual that is winning will always take responsibility and credit their accomplishment to others and the sign of the failure and the setback of an individual and by extension a nation is one that will always be pointing fingers towards others so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens this up in great detail you couldn't have a group that was more wholesome that was more profound that were more hands on that were more devoted than the noble companions may allah be pleased with them they were just not the greatest of this ummah they are the greatest sahaba of any nabi so no nabi enjoyed such sahaba like nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the campaign of uhud things were going well in their life it was happening they were on top of the battle they were victorious they were successful and suddenly there was a snag and there was a sequence of events that started rapidly unfolding against the plan and obviously it left them in thinking mode and they had to ask some tough questions where has this thing gone out where has it gone out and the muslims if they go to the drawing board today from a micro to a macro level from the domestic to the global stage from our social events to bigger events from my family structure and beyond things are not happening things are not happening where have i lost it when did it go wrong اولما اصابتكم مصيبه قد اصبتم مثليها قلتم ان هذا قل هو من عند انفسكم and remember the time in uhud when you were afflicted with a trial and don't forget previously in badr you had inflicted double of that on your opponent and that ayah releases a subtle hint to say 
that when Allah puts you through trials, don't magnify that without being cognizant of the favors you enjoyed previously. So sometimes when you're going through some difficulty and you're going through a bad patch, then remember قَدْ أَصَبْتُمْ مِثْلَيْهَا Previously what Allah had given you. And that's the latif ishara that the verse implies. قُلْتُمْ You said أَنَّا هَذَا أَنَّا هَذَا Where did this come from? Not in objection, but in ta'ajjub. This is what Bayan al-Quran Hakim al writes. In, 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 in astonishment, like, like why? How come? So Allah replied, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِي أَنفُسِكُمْ Say unto them, your setback and your change of events has come from you. And I think that's what I want to set the tone with for both parents and children, young and old, that it's time in English they say you grab the bull by its horns, you bite the bullet, you embrace the responsibility, you move on, come out of a culture of blaming others because of which I have stagnated in my growth. Rise above that, rise above that, go beyond that. And if you're committed, you can deliver and achieve and accomplish. And history bears testimony to the fact. So Allah says, مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكِ That whatever good you enjoy is from Allah. The ulama write that when you look at the bounties, privileges and boons in your life, if you reflect over the recent past or the distant past in your life, you will never find any virtue that you have ever performed that qualifies you for that bounty. There is no virtue I have performed or you have performed. And that mentality needs to come out. The mentality of I'm entitled. I'm, de I de I'm deserving. It's my right. Uh, the, I'm, I, th this is my right. You owe it to me. The society that grows up on the premise of claiming and demanding is a society that has a downward trend. And the society that grows up with the responsibility of owing, I got to do this here. I'm waiting to mature so I can assist my dad. I'm waiting to have a job so I can assist my mom. I'm hoping to do this so I can relieve my aunt. The society that grows up with the minds, and that's the teachings of Islam. That's the teachings of Islam, where you grow up with the responsibility of what you owe to others. Somebody came to Amr ibn Khattab anhu and he said, Inna ummi ajuz, my mom is old, wa ana matiyatuha, and I carry her on my back, ali minha ma kanat tali minni. I practically discharge all what she did for me. Fahal adday tu shukraha, have I discharged and offset her favor upon me? And said, Now Amr anhu said, No, even if you did everything that she did for you, li annaha kanat taf'alu dhalik, wa tadu allaha an yutila amra. The difference is you might be doing the same, but you dread what you do. She did the same, but she cherished what she did. And if I have to give a crude and a brutal translation and not a euphemistic expression, literal expression, then she did it praying that Allah prolongs your life. And you did it hoping that, you know what, she kicks the bucket and she moves on soon. That's the difference between the two. So Islamically, I want to stand up and give back to others. So ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min Allah. Whatever good you have is from Allah. There's no bounty or virtue that you have done to qualify. Wa ma asabaka min sayyatin fa min nafsik. And whatever setbacks, snags, challenges, drops, failures you have in life is because of yourself. And then Allah opens up, and then uh, Allah opens up in the fourth juz about the campaign of Uhud, where Allah then reminds the Sahaba, this is told to a people who are 100% compliant. And at a point where inadvertently, unintentionally, there was a misunderstanding in viewing the events of the battlefield, which brought about a drastic change on the field. So can you imagine us who by nature are non-compliant? By nature, we occasionally obey, they occasionally erred. Allah had delivered on his promise what he had told you. Hatta 
مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ Whatever I told, I did. حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ You lost courage. وَتَنَازَعْتُمْ You internally disputed. وَعَصَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ You became non-compliant after you viewed what you were hoping for. That's the time things turned around. But the beauty of Islam to you, my sister, is young and old, is that we are a nation who looks at things with an objective eye, with a positive eye, and we deduce a moral and a lesson from both our setbacks and our, our strength. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then told the Sahaba that what has happened has happened. Take responsibility. That's the first thing. You see, in, in medical science, they say that when a person is diagnosed, if the first condition or the first expression is denial. That's human nature. You're in denial. And as long as you're in denial, you're not going to take measures of medication because according to you, you're not sick. So doctors are suggesting preliminary reports suggest they could be some cancer cells. No, no, no. It, it's, it's inaccurate. We can always go for a second opinion. It doesn't have to be correct. Uh, I, I don't believe it. Then you, you, you start settling in. No, maybe it could be, but probably it's, it's benign. It's benign. It's not malignant. It's dormant. It's not active. It's restricted. It's not spreading. So your body is fighting the whole thought. But till that point, you're not taking treatment. Because according to you, I don't. Finally, you settle in and you make peace with the situation. That yes, I have a condition and I probably need to go for chemo. I need to do radium. I need to do that. But till you're in denial stage, I'm afraid there's no treatment you're going to institute. As long as you're going to be playing the blame game in your life. I blame you. She blames me. We blame them. They blame us. We just negative energy. That's all negative energy. We're not moving forward. We're not going any way. We're doing absolutely nothing. خَيْرٌ لِلْإِنسَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ كَسُّ لَحْفَاتِ فِي طَرِيقِ الْحَقِّ مِنْ أَنْ يَكُونَ غَزَالًا فِي طَرِيقِ الْخَطَى It's better to be like a rabbit in the correct direction than to run like a deer in the wrong direction. You'd rather be inching in the right direction. Uh, recently, I was gone for a program in, in South Africa where the national park is, Kruger National Park, and it's uh, world-renowned for its safari and wildlife and hunting, etc. So as I was taking a flight back, I observed this uh, uh, article or this, this little writing at the airport. It's a small landing strip that every morning a gazelle gets up in Africa and it knows it has to run faster than the fastest lion or else it will be killed. Every morning a lion gets up in Africa and it knows it has to outrun the slowest gazelle or else it will starve to death. It doesn't make a difference whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun rises, you better be running. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle gets up and it knows it has to run faster than the fastest lion or else it will be killed. And every morning a lion gets up in Africa and it knows it has to outrun the slowest gazelle or else it will starve to death. It doesn't make a difference whether you're a lion or you're a gazelle. When the sun rises, you better be running. What they say, the worst thing is that you have nothing to do. And it even gets more severe when you have too much time to do nothing. <laughs> the worst thing is when you have nothing to do and it gets worse it gets worse when you have too much time to do nothing Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said there's nothing I dislike or despise than to see a human idol, neither constructive for his dunya nor for his akhirah. There's no place in the life of a believer, young or old, male or female. There is no retirement in the concept of Islam. You're performing salat till the day you leave in this world. So, the first thing I'm saying, my sister, is stop blaming. You know, in our marriage circles, we say, 
or because of my husband, because of my mother-in-law, Mari Hau, Ne Mari Hau Chetani, and Obadu Bole Nika Bari Ariya Ke Ho Chale. So I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Rise out of the victim mentality. That is the attitude of a losing team, not the winning. If you're a winner, that's not your mindset. That's not your psychology. So Allah says, one of the torments of the occupants of hell. So there will be a host of inflictions that will be unleashed upon them. One is the punishment itself. The intensity of which we cannot fathom. They'll be given such hot water. He will try to gulp it, but it won't go below his throat or below her throat. Death will encroach and approach from every angle. But he'll never die. When a person is in pain and he dies, Allah had mercy on him. He settled here you will be on the verge of dying, but you'll never die. La yuqda alayhim fa yamutu, wa la yukhaffafu anhum min, wa hum yastarikhuna fiha, and they'll be yelling, they'll be screaming. So one is, suquma an hamimak, hot water, faqatta'a am'a'ahum, it will exit from the back passages. La hum maqami'u min hadid, the angels will have hammers that will be striking them. La hum min jahan, la hum sarabiluhum min qatiran, their clothing will be flammable. Their faces will be surrounded with fire. It will roast. The skin of their faces will be roast. You know, you barbecue, shawa yashwi. The, the, the phrase you use, the same phrase Allah uses. That how they will try and shield themselves with their face because everything else will be shackled. Above them, beneath them. That's the reality. So this is one type of adab. May Allah protect us. Amen. So Fian Tauri said, how can you indulge in any pleasure after which is this fire? Huh? How can you indulge in any pleasure? A person goes to eat and he indulges, he's diabetic, he's got sugar, and then he knows that if he's going to indulge, he's going to have a restless night. And there's another person who restrains himself, he's calculated, he watches his diet, and like they always say in English, and I quote this very extensively, um, if you don't eat your food like medication, you'll end up eating your medication like food. Hello? <laughs> Hello? If you don't eat your food like medication, that's how we're supposed to eat. That's not what I like. Huh? Insan has become a slave unto these taste buds. A slave. For the thrill, for the pleasure, for the kick, for the excitement of this little bit. What haven't we done to these human bodies? Just, just for this here. The kick is here. The thrill is here. Just got to slip down the throat. Then it's irrelevant what goes down. Right? If you don't eat your food like medication, you'll end up eating your medication like food. And that's, that's how it is, you, you know, morning, afternoon, evening. So I'm saying to you, my sister, that will be one form of azab. Then the second type of azab that will happen to the occupants of hell will be a psychological, a psychological. So every time they will be hurled into hell, كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ قَالُوا بَلَا قَدْ جَاءَنَا نَذِيرٌ فَكَذَّبْنَا وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا حتى إذا جاءوها فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى So a psychological, what will be the psychological trauma? Is you're going through physical pain and agony which is at its pinnacle. It's so great that Allah says, that hell is an adequate place to take care. Hell is an adequate place to take care of all their crimes. 
the world doesn't have the capacity to reimburse, compensate or retribute uh, the noble or the wicked. It just doesn't have the, 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 the capacity. The world doesn't have. Somebody comes home, you really want to uh, you know, give him a good time. You want him to eat and indulge. You just want him to enjoy. But then he has a health to look after. You wish he can eat all the food, but he cannot. That's the word. It's a limitation because otherwise you, you're going to be inflicting harm on him. So the angels that are in charge of hell will tell them, oh, so nobody told you that's why you're in hell, right? I guess you weren't warned before. I don't blame. No, no, we were told. Oh, really? They told you. So what happened then? Oh, no, man, don't rub it in, man. <laughs> so this is psychological trauma. Allah speaks about this in the Quran. It's like, you know, I've lost. And now like somebody is like psychologically just drumming this thing in you at it. Can you imagine that pain? Also, you weren't told. You weren't warned. No, no, pala, pala, they told us. Few, what they told you? No, man, yeah. Just back off. No, no, no. Tell us what happened. So that's a separate. Then the third type of trauma, I'm just mentioning the point in the context is so much, is that the losers, the occupants of hell, may Allah protect us, they're going to have this back and forth mutual accusation. It's because of you. It's because of you. 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 Yeah. Don't let that one come here. Who's he? We don't want he. He needs to suffer somewhere else. Yeah. Sometimes what happens is when you are in anger and uh, now you have this resentment for someone who you perceive uh, is the architect of your collapse and your failure and you cannot enjoy deliverance from your crisis. So what you want to do is like, OK, I cannot get out of here, but uh, he needs to get double of what I'm getting. So you just have this rage in your Allah, I know I did wrong, but it, it, this is the guy. It's because of him, Allah. So I just have a request. This is the first of the eight juz. Allah, I just have a request. Whatever punishment you've decided for me, I'm going to live with it because I've done the wrong. But please give him double of mine. That will psychologically give me comfort. And Allah says... There's double for him and double for you. Rabbana inna. My message to you, my sister, is come out of the blame game. Embrace your destiny. Take responsibility. Work towards your own growth. As a spouse, don't blame your partner. As a child, don't blame your parents. As a parent, don't blame your child. That's the focus of my message. Rise above that year. Allah told the Sahaba, Allah told the Sahaba that you ask in what happened, I delivered. Look at yourself. The mistake, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ It happened from you. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَحَقٌ تَخَاصُمُ أَهْلِ النَّارِ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَحَقٌ Surely this is an absolute reality, the mutual argumentation of the occupants of hell. So you... you you burn in, like, say, for example, Allah forbid your flight is delayed. Now you're at the airport. Now you're stranded. They're not giving you a voucher. They're not giving you an accommodation. You're hungry. And then on top of it, the kids are fighting. You know? And, and now it just adds to the whole misery. It's tense. It's stressed. It's uneasy. You're anxious. You need a washroom. You need a, to uh, a hotel. You need to eat. You need to relax. You need to freshen up. You need to know what's happening. But to compound the whole thing is internal. So Allah says, apart from all the other forms of azab, one azab is the fighting, the internal fighting of the occupants of hell. So how are they going to do? If this is the mentality of losers. This is the mentality of losers. So Allah tells Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ مَوْقُوفُونَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يَرْجِعُ بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ الْقَوْلِ I know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you had to be present at the moment when the criminals, the sinners, the oppressors, the occupants of hell will be standing by hell blaming each other. Throwing it at each other. يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا لَوْلَا أَنْتُمْ لَكُنَّا مُؤْمِنِينَ so the weak ones, those that were, you know, governed, ruled, overpowered, they're going to say to those in power, mind, muscle, etc. If it was not for you people, wallah, we would have been Muslims. I'm giving you a verse of the Quran, ya ulama, ya my brother, my sister, I'm not going to shoot from my pocket. 
Because of you, I have sat back. You've held me back. I'm not refuting these challenges. All I'm saying, the mindset of blaming is the mindset of a loser. And the mindset, I'll come back to this ayah, the mindset of a winner is to mutually compliment. I am where I am because of my parents. No, no, my, because of my kids, because of my family. Where you mutually support, that's the mindset of a winning team. No, hey, you guys did great. You were great. No, it's it's a, it's t it's a team's effort. It's a team's effort. Hey, you know, must you pull off an amazing? Pro it's a team's effort. It's a team's effort. You know what? It's a team's effort. Th that's the mindset of a winning uh, nation. So when the Muhajirin migrated from Mecca to Medina, the duration of Musnad Ahmad, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Inna ikhwana kum qattaraku al amwala wal awlad." Your brothers left their family, they left their belongings, and they've come to Medina. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared this with the Ansar. So the Ansar said, uh, O Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, Amwaluna baynana qata'iq. Okay. Then from today, half our wealth belongs to them and it belongs to us. It's like, like can you imagine this here? You say, hey, your brothers came from Makkah. Alhamdulillah, good luck to you. <laughs> That's my language. Good luck. Alhamdulillah. Nabi Sallallahu just made one statement. In ikhwanakum qad taraku al amwala wal awlad. Your brothers left their health and their wealth and their belongings and they came. So Sahaba said, Amwaluna baynana qata'iq. You know in Arabic they say, Al aqilu takfihi al ishara wal jahilu la takfihi al risala. <laughs> that an intelligent person is one, just a gentle hint, and he picks the message. And a person who's not focused, who's not skilled, you can write him a whole letter also, he doesn't get the point. One of the great forms of tarbiyah, the ulama I just have a flash of that, my mind is hopping around, but inshallah it's all meaning and beneficial for us all. One form of tarbiyah is where you just release a gentle hint. That is a great form of tarbiyah. And the ulama have deduced that from the Quran. That when you need to nurture someone, you do it in a very diplomatic, euphemistic, gentle, passive, uh, uh, implicit, not explicit, implicit way. And the person himself or herself realizes that my dad or my mom or my senior is just hinting. There's so many narrations. Just too quickly maybe and then we move on. So there's a narration of Ibn Asakir that Hassan Basri says that uh, I was sitting in the Jamia Masjid of Basra and Ahnaf ibn Qais was there and he says Ataytu Majlisan I came to a gathering and in which uh, people were speaking about a campaign and expedition in the time of Umar ibn Khattab so he said we went in an expedition to Iraq and we came back and when we came back we were victorious and uh, we had booty and we had exclusive clothing so we attired ourselves and we came back and we, we donned this new clothing and we brought some of the spoils of the war, etc. So when we came to Sayyidina Umar to greet him, فَأَعْرَضَ عَنَّا بِوَجْهِهِ وَجَعَلَ لَا يُكَلِّمُنَا Umar he didn't say anything, he just turned his face away. فَاشْتَدَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ For the noble Sahaba, that was too much. There was a time in our history where if a father turned his face, then that was tantamount to death for the child. When the Ustad looked away, that was tantamount to aversion for that student. His food was gone, his sleep was gone, his pleasure was gone. Today, if the father looks away, the son, tough luck, who needs that? He looks the other way. He's over. فَأَتَيْنَا ibn Amr, One ishara, just a slight turn away. فَأَتَيْنَا ibn Umar, فَشَكَوْنَا we came to Abdullah ibn Umar and we said, you know what, this is what happened. He said, Inna Amir al -mu'minin ra'a alaykum libasan lam yara Rasulullah sallam yalbasuhu. You know what? Knowing my father, the reason my father turned his face, he saw you wearing clothing which Nabi sallam didn't wear. And my father's eye won't digest it. I mentioned this in many of my talks, my, my granny, may Allah give her Jannah. I was a kid at that time, but these words of hers reverberate with me. And at that stage, I was just a kid and I didn't understand. So every time I used to go take her and I used to tell her, Ma, Kemcho, I, whatever. So she said, Dikrawi, tomorrow, I'll stay, Dwa karawi, Allah, Mane, Leilia. 
So I said, my kya mein jaata mone nii chhu jo. I was a kid man. So she used to say, I juni aakti nawa tamaha nii jawata. I juni aakti nawa tamaha nii jawata. I juni aakti nawa tamaha nii jawata. These old eyes can't see these new fitnas. These are eyes of modesty. They can't see immorality. These are eyes of respect. They can't see disrespect. These are ears of dignity. They can't hear flamboyant, immoral, obscene. It cannot. I, I'm, I'm grappling to digest. These are eyes that are old, ancient, traditional, primitive, and now to digest to these things is just just not making peace with it. So Sahaba were those who wanted to change. So we came home. We changed our clothing. We didn't like. No, but we went and we entitled. But Umar wasn't there. But how can Umar say? But it's our right. So they came back, and then they wore their regular clothes. فَقَامَ يُعَانِقُنَا كَأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَرَنَا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ Omar stood up and he started embracing us like nothing happened before this. From this we also learn, address the problem, not the individual. Uh, play the ball, not the player. Play the ball, not the man. So I don't have an issue with you, I have an issue with what you did. You've addressed an issue, we're back to where we were. We're back to where we were. So back in the time, one ishara was adequate. Nabi Sa Abu Dawud's narration, Nabi Sa was walking. He said, this building, whose is it? He said, so and so. Okay. Then that Sahabi came to meet Nabi Sa Alaihi Nabi Sa turned his face away. Narration of Abu Dawud. So he asked the Sahaba, what's it? He said, I don't know, but we passed by your building and Nabi Sa tone expressed unhappiness. So he went back to them and he said, drop it to the ground. Allah. Drop it. You got builders, you got architects, you got engineers, you got QS, quantity surveyors, you got people hands on, just drop it. Why? Well, if my Nabi is not happy, how are there going to be happiness in that building? If my Nabi is not happy, then Nabi Sassam passed by, he said, but wasn't there something being developed here? He said, yeah. We, he came to us and he said, oh Nabi of Allah, you turned your face. So we told him, we think you are not happy. Then Nabi Sassam said, may Allah bless him. May Allah bless him. Now, I want that blessing in my life, but I'm not ready to drop that which has become a hurdle between me and Allah's Nabi. I'm not happy to drop that. So, that's my passion. So anyway, what I'm saying is that the pious were those that a gentle ishara. Sayyidina Dawud alayhi salatu was salam used to worship Allah Ta'ala night and day. And in his palace, there was somebody worshipping Allah all the time. So one day he said, Oh Allah, in my palace, there isn't a moment but that you worshipped. So Allah said, Yes, O Dawood, it is through my help. If I were to snatch that tawfiq, you won't be able to deliver on it. And in Tafsir Uthmani, under this whole bahas, it's written there, that when a servant says, Allah, I have done this, and I have achieved this, then Allah says, yeah, but I give you the health, the wealth, the time, the strength. And when a servant says, Allah, through your tawfiq, this has happened, through your ability, this has happened, then Allah says, yes, my servant, but it's your good intentions as well. So when a servant directs it to Allah, then Allah acknowledges his intentions in it. And when a servant takes credit to himself, then Allah says, but if I had to take my tawfiq out of the equation, there was nothing you were going to do. And so Dawud alayhi salatu was salam uh, was, Allah said, I'm going to take one day. This is the, the more authentic view of this entire narration. Allah makes reference of it in the Quran as well. That uh, I worship you and in my palace at every moment somebody is worshipping Allah. So then came the time, one day he would sit in his chamber and he would make ibadah. And that time was dedicated full. Then there was time to meet with the family. Then there was time to address the judgments, etc. Responsibilities, you know, that were there. So he was busy and then the butlers were manning the place. Nobody had access. And while he was there, suddenly two people just scaled all the walls and just barred in and penetrated everything. And they got... وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ نَبَأُ الْخَصْمِ إِذْ تَسَوَّرُوا الْمِحْرَابِ إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَى دَاوُودَ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ 
So there's protocol, there's procedure, there's the formality, you need to come there, meet with the security, then the next person gradually. But these people scaled all protocol and they got right in. And then they said, uh, listen, man, the two of us here, this is my brother, he's got 99 sheep and I have one. And uh, he wants to take my one and make it into 100. And the problem is he's got the gift of the gap. The way he talks, you'll be convinced 100 belong to him. And I cannot speak. وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ He's dominant in his speech. فَقَالَ كْفِلْنِيهَا وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ And Sulaiman uh, Dawud overheard this and he said, yeah, this is incorrect and that's the human nature. The majority of partners, this is what they do. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْخُلَطَاءِ لَيَبْغِي بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحِ So this whole thing happened and Dawud alayhi salatu wasalam explained and they were discussing and next best thing they disappeared. Next best thing they disappeared. The incident is referenced in the Quran my brother. And that is why I keep on saying it, it hurts me that when we talk of things that are basically discussed in the Quran, people are like, oh, okay, really? Oh, I, I didn't know that. Wow. And if you talk of some current news and people don't know, hey, brother, get awake, man. In which world are you living? Get awake, man. Where are you living? This is in the Quran. And as soon as they left, Dawud salam realized that I was busy resolving their argument and engaging in the litigation process. And what happened to my claim that at every moment somebody is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's when he fell down in sajda and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So under this ayah in Marif al-Quran, Muti Shafi sahab rahmatullah, he says, we deduce from this lesson of ta'deeb that how Allah instituted that one of the best ways is to create a scenario of discipline that the disciple and the student himself, it can dawn upon him. Okay, this is it. But then, like I said, it needs someone who's alert enough. Because otherwise, unfortunately, we are those that we deflect criticism and we embrace praise. When he's talking of criticism, by Tarahatewat Karaj. He's not talking to me, he's talking to you. Anyway, I was saying, oops, look at time. I was saying the sign of a losing team is blaming. Right? So that's what's going to happen on the day of Tiyama. Allah says that the, those that are in hell, they're going to say to their leaders, if it wasn't for you, I would have been believers. Then these people are going to sit and say, yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry, I'm so sorry what happened. No, no. Listen, don't come and throw it at us here. Did I physically stop you, prevent you? I told you what I'm doing and you decided to join me. You yourself are criminals. Then the Quran goes on to say, they're going to retort again. بَلْ كُنْتُمْ مُجْرِمِينَ وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا بَلْ مَكْرُوا اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ إِذْ تَأْمُرُونَنَا أَنْ نَكْفُرَ بِاللَّهِ وَنَجْعَلَ لَهُ أَنْدَادًا You would recall those moments at night when you would tell us to do wrong and vice. But then the Quran says the reality is they will blame, blame and try and get sympathy. But in the heart of hearts, وَأَسَرُّ النَّدَامَةً وَأَسَرُّ النَّدَامَةً لَمَّا رَأَوْا الْعَذَابِ The one who was following and the one who was leading both know they're equally guilty. And internally they're going to be crying in their hearts and concealing their regret. I had a chance, I just kept on blaming and accusing and implicating, but I know I am wrong. This is just a face argument to try and justify and exonerate myself. But the reality is I am to be blamed myself. So I said, my sister, the first thing is take responsibility. When we've taken responsibility, you know, the worst thing of it all would be is that, like the Quran says, some people cause corruption, they cause mischief, and then when you come to them and tell them, see, stop doing what you're up to, and they say, no, 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 I'm the one who's bringing peace. Right? And there's no shortage of these people. <coughs> that they doing the entire wrong, it's because of them, there's poison, there's cancer, the environment is toxic, it's unpleasant, the ambience is somber, it's miserable, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ Ooh, well, The whole world is full of them. The whole world is full of them. They can talk a lot. And that's a sign of a munafiq. 
So there was this Munafiq Akhnas bin Shuraik who would come in the gathering of the Prophet I promise you, I'm going to do this here. If I'm in charge and I have this, I love you. I love you the most. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِ There are some people whose speech will blow you away, they'll mesmerize you. When he had the inaugural bash and he was sworn into office, wow, the flowery speech left the world mesmerized. But then the Quran said, وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى And then when he took, تَوَلَّى has two meanings. وَإِذَا أَدْبَرَ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى الْأَمْرَ When he came into the actual seat, this was just his preliminary uh, uh, inaugural bash. You know what? This is what I'm going to do. But وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى الْأَمْرِ فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ When he took the responsibility, وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثَ وَالنَّسْلَ وَاللَّهُ لَا Then he just caused havoc. He just brought misery. He just brought chaos. He just, he just rocked the entire boat. So the irony of the whole thing is that you have a wrong, which I have, you have, and that's the reality, and that's what we need to address and change in our life, and give up our addictions of wrong, vice, social media, etc. And we claim to be that we can cure others. Pharaoh had the cancer, and he said, I treat people who have cancer. Can it get worse than that? Right? مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى وَمَا أَهْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى Like this is the pits, this is the limits. Can it get worse than this? So, Allah told the Sahaba in Uhud, your setback in the campaign was because of yourself. Now, that's the first point. The second point is as a believer, this is not bad news for us. Because even in our setbacks, it's an opportunity of growth. So I say to a lot of youth, and I deal with youngsters that are on drugs, substance abuse, etc. Uh, and I visited the, the, the medical center that we have for youth, and may Allah make it easy. And I've given talks where kids come in completely shackled because of their substance abuse. Uh, some were intercepted at the point that they were plotting the assassination of their mom. Recently I gave a talk, and I see this brother in my talk, they're shackled up. So I said to the custodian, I said, but why, why have you shackled him up? So he said, unfortunately, due to the heavy levels of drug addiction, uh, he, he actually embarked and plotted on killing his mom. Oh, no. And then we managed to intercept and he was brought in. So anyway, I tried to comfort him to the best of my ability and give him some hope and guidance. Uh, and, and that's my first message, that there is hope. There is hope, my brother. There is hope, my sister. Whatever the sun is provided, we, we're ready and we're committed to deal it. So in Arabic, they say, Sometimes, you need to sin more to fall so that it jolts you to make a drastic change. So by way of example, a person's got a smoking habit. And then, you know what, his lungs are deteriorating, but he's not realizing the negative impact. He needs to slip and go deeper into the wrong to realize that he needs now urgent medical intervention and he has to be admitted into a medical facility. And now when he's lying on his medical bed and he's looking at the ceiling, he's asking himself some serious questions about life. And had he not slipped deeper and ended up there, probably he would have never made the 360 degree change in his life. So while we don't advocate that, but we say if it has happened in hindsight, occasionally it could be a blessing in disguise to make some changes in your life. So what I'm trying to say is embrace your responsibility. Take, I am responsible. If I do the right things, I will go in the right way. I'm, from today, I'm not going to be blaming anyone. I'm going to take responsibility. And thus far for the challenges that I have, I'm going to look at the positivity in it. A positive thinker, finds an opportunity in every difficulty. A negative thinker finds a difficulty in every opportunity. So as positive thinkers, we find an opportunity in every difficulty. And that's what Allah told the Sahaba in Uhud. That what happened was because of what you did. But understand, <laughs> So 
وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين وليمحص الله الذين آمنوا ويمحق الكافرين My word If you see what's written in Bayan Al-Quran under this ayah you'll be blown off your head So إن يمسسكم قرح If you've been afflicted with pain now فقد مس القوم قرح مثله Your setback was because of what you did but don't let that allow you to consume you into depression. Don't let that, oh, well, you know what? This is what happened and I'm so down and lame and lethargic and I have no drive and I have no gumption in life. No, no, no. A believer is some that you can pick him up. You can propel him. You can cajole him. You can invigorate him. You can inspire him to a greater level. Move on from here. Pick up from here. The famous incident of the person who did all the wrong and killed 100 people. In the end he died. فَكَانَ أَقْرَبْ إِلَى الْقَرِيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ بِشِبْرٍ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ فَنَآ بِصَدْرِهِ In the end nothing happened. The only thing happened was he died with the right intention. In the end he didn't change. He died with the right intention. فَغُفِرَ لَهُ And he was forgiven. So my point is, take responsibility and don't be in a depression mode. Don't be in a depression mode. You know, let me share with you something, man. And this is on a very deeper level, but uh, I'll come back to this, inshallah. How are we with that? We good? Okay. I'm, I'm chilled. Listen to this, my brother and my sister. So... Musa alayhi salatu was salam's mother, and I was reading this in Hakim al-Ummah, and I keep on urging the ulama to read his mawa'id, and that you, you, you'll, you'll see uloom. But unfortunately today, it's just not been read. So, Musa alayhi salatu was salam's mother is told, put your baby in the basket, and put the basket in the Ravanai. That's the verse of the Quran. And then, that's the command to the mother and then the command to the water is take the basket to the shore. So you do what you need to do. Your job is put him in the basket, put the basket in the water, the water. The water will put him on the shore. And then Allah said, don't worry, O the mother of Musa, I've arranged for my enemy and his enemy to receive him. <laughs> the verse of the Quran, the verse of the Quran. You know, now can you imagine what, what strength it takes from a mother? What strength it takes? You have the sukhar biduni murafiq, unaccompanied minors, right? And then you have the cabin crew taking care of them, and then you have them in a separate place, and people looking after them, etc. And uh, when the child is small, and the mother is sending the child off with the father, and she's like, he'll be okay. And, and after the while, like, I'm a father. <laughs> I'm a dad, man. Look, I'm not going to be all like, yeah, yeah, but he'll eat. I'll, in my own way, I'll take care of my child. I'm not going to be pampering him. I'm like, you know, eat, eat, you don't want to eat, sleep. <laughs> so Allah told, this is an amazing principle of psychology from the Quran. In the time of Nabi Sallallahu psychology was practice. It was not coined as a science, but it was practice. Today it's coined as a science. There's a therapy, there's a center. But it's not executed, it's theory. So we have a therapist, we have a psychologist, we have a psychiatrist. It's terminologies, it's money-making schemes, but it's, it's not physically executed. The narration of Tirmidhi, when you go and visit someone who's sick, then give him comfort that he will live. Because giving him hope that he will live won't prolong his life but will add value to the remaining days of his life. Now you want to teach me psychology? There was a youngster who came, was doing psychology, and he said, we've been told to interview a, a religious leader. Uh, so I said, you know what? The elementary aspect of prophetic psychology is beyond where your psychology ends. <laughs> the elementary aspects of Islamic psychology is, right? So, the mother of Musa is now told, لا تخافي ولا تحزني. 
I was just blown away by this man. Don't fear, don't grieve. Put him in there and let him go. Hakimul Ummah raises a question. How could Allah or how did Allah restrict and limit and forbid and prohibit the mother from grieving and being sad when those are non-voluntary emotions? You don't grieve by choice. Allah said, don't grieve and don't fear. You don't fear by choice. You don't grieve by choice. Listen, put him in there and then la takhafi wa la tahzani. And you're speaking to a mother. Hello? <laughs> That's why I keep on saying, my brother and my sister, break your head to understand Quran. Whether you understood it or not, it's a meaningful exercise. It's meaningful mental gymnastics. It's meaningful to exert your mind in this year. Then break in your head to understand all other things which are futile and have no meaning. So Allah told the mother put, and Allah said if we had not strengthened her heart, she would have never able to. Right? وَأَصْبَحَ فُعَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغًا إِن كَادَتْ لَتُبْدِي بِهِ لَوْلَا أَرْبَطْنَا عَلَى قَلْبِهَا لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Wow, wow. Your hearts will burst. So, غَمْ and حُزْن is غَيْرِ اِخْتِيَارِي I just want you to understand the point and the message. It's outside your control. And yet Allah says, don't fear. He writes so beautifully. He said, غم, grief, huzn, uh, and غم and خوف, huzn and خوف, grief and fear, are غير اختياري, non-voluntary, huduthan, not baqaan. Huduthan, not baqaan. Academic, I'll simplify it. I'll put flesh to theory. Huduthan means to fear and to grieve are outside your control by inception. But it's totally in your control to suppress it or sustain it. So the thought of grief can come outside your control. But to nip it in the bud and to contain it or allow it to contain you. That's your choice. Fear can hit you. You can allow that fear to run with you and you won't move in your bed and you'll sit and dream and assume and fear everything. Or you can cut it there. So where Allah said, لا تخافي ولا تحزني It means huduthan, it will come because you're a mother, you're going to fear. But don't allow that fear to eat you up. And what do we say? Focus on positive energy. Focus on positive energy. And what's the positive energy? Inna radduhu ilayk wa ja'iluhu minal mursaleen. Inna radduhu ilayk wa ja'iluhu minal mursaleen. Don't think of what's going to happen now. Take comfort. He's coming back and he's going to be a prophet. That's the message from the Quran. Focus on that. So the prohibition, and then Hakim al Umar writes, take my principle and analyze it in all aspects of grief and depression in your life. And this is an answer deduced from the Quran. That don't stagnate on that. So the point I'm trying to say is that thus far, whatever has happened, don't let that take you back. Don't let that take you back. Move forward. Move forward. So Allah told the nation, Allah told Sahaba, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ Actually, I was reading a, a hadith in, in, in which he was speaking and, and I was blown away. We know the famous hadith when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam climbed the mimbar and he said, Ameen. And he climbed the mimbar and he said, Ameen. And he climbed the mimbar and he said, Ameen. And Sahaba said, Why? And he said, you know, Jibreel came to me and he said, Woe be to the one who sees his parents, one or two, and he doesn't serve them in Anjana. And I said, Ameen. And then uh, he said, Woe be to the one, Ba'uda man indahu falam yusalli alayka kultu ameen. Woe be to the one before whom your name is mentioned and he doesn't send salutations. And I said, Ameen. And then Ba'uda man adraka Ramadan falam yughfar lahu. That woe be to the one who finds Ramadan and doesn't get his forgiveness. And I said, Ameen. So he raises a question. 
that Jibril is cursing, Nabi Sassim is endorsing the curse. But the curse didn't come on for a person who stole or a person who did something else. Why did the curse come on these three actions? And he said human nature is you tend to curse people when they fail to accomplish simple things more. When you give somebody a simple task and they don't, it irks you and provokes you even more. Like so simple, your parents and you can't earn Jannah. So simple to send salutations. So simple, so simple Ramadan. No man, you need a curse. Jibril curses and I say Amin. So he was explaining the logic of the curse. And on that I was reading. So Allah told the Sahaba, I'm saying now, you've taken responsibility. What has happened? See the positive in it. That's the eye. What I say, you talk of psychology. Look at the... If you are in pain, then other people went through similar. And these are the days we rotate in victory. And in that Bayan al-Quran, Hakim al-Ummah writes, the reason why Allah rotates victory in this world, sometimes for the believers, sometimes against the believers. Al-harbu baynana sijal, nanalu minhum wa yanaluna minna. Bukhari, Kitab al-Iman, first volume. Uh, when Hiraqal asked Abu Sufyan, uh, al-harbu sijal baynana, nanalu minhum wa yanaluna minna. Sometimes this way, sometimes that way. Why? Because if victory was always there for the believers, then where's the test to Iman? Where's the test to Iman? Iman is a test. And if it's open, apparent, complete, compelling, permanent victory, then, 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 then where's the test? So Allah said in the Quran, in the 19th Jews, in Surah Shu'ara, I could send down a miracle and compel everyone to become Muslims. But then there's no test. Inna sha' nunazdil alayhim min as-sama'i aya fadallat a'naquhum laha khadi'in They'll just be mesmerized and everybody, but that's not it. That's not it. Uh, you, you, uh, a teacher tells his students, and I to you know tease my students and say, I say really I want you all to pass. So one is like, okay, then just give us the paper. <laughs> <laughs> if you're really so passionate about the whole thing and you really want, you know what, you all to pass. Mm. I still always tell them like, make me proud, and I want the student with the lowest mark in my class to have higher than the one in the first class. But I know it never happened. But I still just keep on giving this the incentive. So one is like, okay, if that's the case. But if I give you the paper and you take the paper, what's the thrill? What's the joy? What's the feeling? What's the excitement? It's just a fake superficial exercise. So, Listen, in your setback and in your snag and in your mistake, things turned around. But the positive of that is some lives were lost and those lives were lost were martyrs. Wallahu la yuhibbu al-zalimin. Wow, what Hakim al-Ummah writes here. And Allah dislikes the evildoers. Don't interpret the victory of the disbelievers that Allah is pleased with them. The, the victory that they got momentarily was because of a mistake you made. Not because Allah is pleased with them. Wow, wow. Wallahu la yuhibbu al-zalimeen. So why does Allah say he doesn't like them? So you're going to say, but then Allah gave them victory. So is Allah happy with them? No, no, no. This was to discipline you because you made a mistake. This is no sign of happiness for them. وَلِيُمَحِّصَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. Allah had blessed him with a kingdom, with an empire like no other kingdom. We could understand the speech of animals. Uh, person speaks three, four languages. I'm going to share with you a, a Latifa, right? I was flying back from Toronto years ago and in, 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 in the flight in business class. And there was this uh, elderly gentleman who looked very much a Middle Eastern Egyptian. I was dressed in my soul. And uh, so we boarded the flight. And then uh, he started checking with me in Arabic and I started conversing with him in Arabic. And mashallah, we went this 14 hour long haul, we were sitting across each other. 
the color going the roof I and mean, we we talking it was good like 3 4 hours so i to me he looked like the egyptian he was quite in advanced in age and i'm not sure precisely what he viewed me to be but anyway after 4 hours he says to me ajdadu kam in wayn so like your ancestry is from where so i said ajdadi min al hind my roots go back to india so he said, "Topa chita me su Gujarati mani wat kar." Aara aara char kallak thi army ma apne me watok kare ya. Char kallak thi tamhe army ma un tamara hathe ya. Tamhe kya su Gujarati mani mani hu kawar ke tamhe bhi India na. Lekin aur ham jo ke tamhe to Arab, to kya ubi the chha majlo to. Can you imagine Sulaiman Ali Salam could speak to the animals? Wow. And Allah speaks about it. Allah names the chapter number, the colony of ants. What was the respect Allah gave him? Hatta idha atau ala wadin namli qalat namla. My word. Qalat namla tu ya ayyuhan namlu dukhulu masakinakum. There's a whole nahwi bahas if that namla was muzakkar or muannad. We won't go into all that now. قالت نملة يا أيها النمل دخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان. So he's coming. Sometimes you come to an event, to a gathering, and you can hear the guest speaker has arrived, and people just move. Can you just usher him, clear the way? And obviously you are humbled by the respect that is being conferred upon you, and it's a moment of 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 humility. The ulama say, يجب على من مدح أن يتواضع ولا يغتر وأن يذكر ما عنده من عيوب سترها الله تعالى عليه. That whenever anybody praises you, that is the moment to immediately reflect over the sins which they don't know about you, and that will deflate your ego. So whenever anybody is praising, just immediately go into reflection mode. If he knew what I know, he wouldn't have said what he's saying. Chapter close. Why? Why? Why buy into that false praise? Why? Why? Why enjoy the thrill? Huh? Why enjoy? I keep on saying to these youngsters, they drive in this, uh, you know, courtesy vehicles when you give your car to the workshop and everything. And hey, great wheels! Uh, thanks for the compliments. <laughs> I mean, back off! It's not yours. <laughs> Are you so hungry for praise? Are you so desperate? Hey, brother, I love your wheels. Yeah, awesome. And you're not the first person to tell me. <laughs> but it's not yours. Like really? Are you so desperate? That somebody praises you. So Sulaiman alayhi salam is coming, and the whole ends among themselves. Like, hey, move, 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 move. Never mind the human and the jinnat. The ends are talking to each other. Move. Can you imagine what an honor is that? فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكَمْ مِنْ قَوْلِهَا وَقَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نَعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ And that's a Nabi, at any moment, the height of happiness or the pinnacle of sadness, his composure and his balance is intact. He doesn't lose himself. Humans, when they're overwhelmed with joy or they're extremely sad, they lose themselves. They lose themselves. They blurt things, they utter things, they say things, they lose their balance. A Nabi never loses himself. Never, never, at any point. He's completely under control and guidance and inspiration from Allah. So he smiles and he says, Allah, give me the ability to be grateful, Allah. Give me the ability to be grateful. Such is the respect that you have given me. And ashkura ni'matak allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya. And there's so much here that's mentioned here, but just to progress quickly, the favors upon me and upon my uh, parents. Wa an'amala salihan. Give me the ability to do good deeds. And he didn't stop there. Tarbahu. Tarbahu. Allah, then I ask you, be happy with the good deeds that I perform. And then he didn't stop there also. وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكْ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ Then with your mercy, enter me into the place of Jannah with your pious servants. That's why the ulama have written in Al-Bahru Al-Muhid, this is mentioned, I just have a thought of it now, where Allah says, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Allah didn't say, مَنْ عَمِلَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ Whoever performs a good deed, Allah said, whoever brings it with him when he dies. So you can perform a good deed, but if you destroyed it, 
it's not going to come with you. Allah said, Jah. That uh, 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 a man comes and he boasts, I give this analogy, you know, I earn so much. So the wife is no, 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 wait. So we don't want to know how much you earn. Ask him how much he brings home. <laughs> right? There's tax deductions, there's payments, there's retirement fund, there's uh, all that. Don't give me your net salary. Tell me what you come in home with. Allah doesn't want to know what you perform. Allah wants to know what you bring in with you in your qabr. Don't tell me your 40 hajj and don't tell me your 30 this year. When you died, what did you bring with the narration of Abu Umama? A person will come and look at his deeds and say, Allah, I see a lot of wrong I did is written here, but good deeds, many good deeds I did is not written here. Allah will say, yes, we deleted it because of riba. The narration of Abu Umama is mentioned in Ma'arif al-Quran under the ayah, وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ that's why Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, Adrakna salaf wa hum la yaroon al-ibadata fi salati wala fi sawmi wala fi nkib wa lakin fi al-kaffi an a'arad al-nas fa qa'imu al-layl wa sa'imu al-nahar illa m yahfad lisanahu aflas yawm al-qiyama We stayed with the pious. They never interpreted piety as salah and fasting. They interpreted it as looking after your tongue. So those who fast by day and stand up in the hajjud by night, if they don't harness their tongue, they're going to stand up with nothing on the day of qiyamah. Ibn Taqiq al-Aid said, مَا تَكَلَّمْتُ كَلِمَةً إِلَّا أَعْدَدْتُ لَهُ جَوَابًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Never have I uttered a word in my life, but I pre prepared my response. If Allah asks me why you said this, I have the answer for it. مَنْ صَرَّحَ لِسَانَهُ فِي أَعْرَاضِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Ibn al-Jawzi said, the one who lets his tongue loose. You see, that again, Arabic, man. this language just baffles me. Man sarraha, 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 you sarrihu tasrih means to live free. And Allah uses that same word in talaq. Allah uses that same word in meadows. Walakum fiha jamalun, hina turihuna wa hina tasrahun. Allah says, Ya, you know your wealth, there's beauty when you. When you, when you release your animals in the open, in the fields, and they graze freely and openly, it's a sense of pride and joy. You come to some person's house, you know what? You see his garage, it's like a workshop. It's like a fleet there. Uh, it's a showroom. Uh, wow, it's stunning. Look at the cabs and the cars. It's stunning. So in that time was your animals. And for you is beauty. Conveyance has two things. It takes you from one place to another and it's a pride, the brand you hold. Right? The Quran speaks about this here. That is why another name of Surah Al-Nahal is Ni'am. Because Allah speaks of bounties. وَتَحْمِلُ أَثْقَالَكُمْ إِلَىٰ بَلَدٍ لَمْ تَكُونُوا بَالِغِيهِ إِلَّا بِشِقِّ الْأَنفُسِ And it transports your loads to locations which you cannot do but by exerting yourself. And then you release it. And then when you release it and you say, Yeah, yeah. I badat tamu itu apa dah alhamdulillah perlu cak. Ya dia badu alhamdulillah. Tapi badu. I ek ekta I gami itu alhamdulillah alhamdulillah. So you have a sense of pride. Walakum fiha jamal. Walakum fiha jamal. Jamal. Hina turihun when they return in in the evening. Wahina tasrahun when you leave them open. And that's exactly what Allah says. Either a woman is in your wedlock with respect. Or you release with dignity. Leave her to be a free bird to move on with her life. But you cannot shackle her, exploit her and abuse her. Imsakum bi ma'roofin aw tasrihum bi ihsan. There's just no other way. So Ibn al-Jawzi says, Man sarraha lisanahu fi a'radi al-Muslimin. Kaffa Allahu lisanahu ani shahada inda al-mawt. The one whose tongue is free, he's like this, she's like this, they like this, attacking, accusing, implicating, Allah will withhold his tongue from shahada at the time of death. So anyway, just to wrap up things here, my sister, much was said. Uh, Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, Allah had given him so much. He had jinnat that would come out, like, like it was all happening, he's got this major operation. He's got people taking care of each portfolio. Everything is in order, in sync, right? So there is the Jinnat. Their task is to put up monuments. Their task is to build massive dags and pots. 
Their task is to build chambers. Allah speaks about this in Surah to Saba. يَعْمَلُونَ لَهُ مَا يَشَاءُ مِن مَحَارِيبَ وَتَمَاثِيلَ وَجِفَانٍ كَالْجَوَابِ وَقُدُورِ الرَّاسِيَاتِ Jawab is a plural of Jabiyah. There's no sawal in Jawabiyah. وَقُدُورِ الرَّاسِيَاتِ عَمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُدَ Shukr. Allah gave him everything. And what did Allah say? Practice gratitude. You know, people say, hey, I don't know how to thank Allah. That's an easy way out. Sometimes you don't want to introduce a person. Our speaker doesn't need any introduction. You're lazy to introduce. I'm not saying for me. No, no. You are lazy. I don't know how to pray to thank Allah. No, well, you don't know and I don't know. Well, I'm telling you how Allah wants us to thank Him. He didn't say, Ushkuruni. He said, I'amalu ala Dawood shukra. Practice gratefulness. Practice it. Display it. Abu, I love you. Okay, prove you love me. That's not the way you show me you love me, my sons. That's not the way you show me. I love you, I'm, I'm not, but that's not the way you show it to me. Do it, show it, walk it, exhibit it, deliver it, execute it. I'amalu, I'amalu, practice. Ala Dawood shukra. And then Allah complained and said, Wa qalilun min ibadi is shakur. Very few of my servants are grateful. Then Allah said, they dive in the oceans. I'm, I'm getting to a point here. And I'm concluding on that same point here is the side of a winning team, of a winning mind, of a positive energy is that we take on our own energy. We take on our own responsibility. We stop the blame. And I said that uh, the sign of those that win, we compliment. And losers, we accuse. We accuse. So there's that hadith, we'll conclude with that hadith after this incident, insha'Allah. So, the jinnat are diving in the ocean. وَمِنَ الشَّيَاطِينِ مَنْ يَغُوسُونَ لَهُ وَيَعْمَلُونَ عَمَلًا دُونَ ذَلِكَ Now sometimes a person is possessed by one jinn, and what happens to him? So this was a whole armies of jinnat. Allah said, وَكُنَّا لَهُمْ حَافِظِينَ We kept them under control. Suleiman is under total order, and we kept them under control. And there was a perception out there in the people, it's going to take time. Let's conclude with this. Yeah. Suleiman had jinnat, he had insan, he had animals and everything. But one day something went wrong. And what went wrong? They halted at a place. And there's a bird that has a duty to do something. And that bird was to locate where the water is. Show us where there's water. And then the jinnat will dig and then the water will gush. And then the army will make wudu and drink and whatever. And we move on. And so they halt, and uh, the bird is not around. Where, where, where is this bird? And he rotated his gaze and he started searching and looking and he couldn't find. The scholars of Tafsir make an amazing deduction. When the bird was not found, he didn't say Mali al Hudhud, he said Mali la ara al Hudhud. He didn't say, what's wrong with the bird? He said, what's wrong with me? Have I done something wrong that I have been blocked off from seeing the bird? Or is the bird literally absent? His first point of engagement was soul searching and introspection with himself. And that's what Hakim Al-Umma has written under this ayah. I told you that whatever good you did, neither in your recent past or your distant past, Will you find any virtuous action which qualifies you for that bounty? And whatever difficulty or setback, you will always find that you did something wrong in your life which warrants this and worse. You've got to be candid and honest. There's always I have done and you have done something which justifies, legitimizes, warrants this and worse. In fact, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu under this ayah in the 25th juz, مَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةً فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever affliction you have is because of what you do. He used to say, هَذِهِ أَرْجَى آيَةً فِي الْقُرْآنِ This ayah gives me the most hope. People said, what's the hope in it? Allah says, whatever difficulties you got is because of your wrong. So, he said, this ayah gives me so much comfort and solace and ease and hope. So, they asked him, why? He said, لِأَنَّ الْكَرِيمَ إِذَا عَاقَبَ مَرَّ لَا يُعَاقِبُ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى 
Because Allah is Kareem. And Kareem is, if He makes you taste the consequences of your wrong once, He won't make you taste it again. People, they'll come to your cover also and tell you. They will repeat it. Uh, a mother, a mother has so much love, but even she forgives. But I'm going to go get ke. Watch, watch, ma. They tell you, baby, you are staying with you. Then you march on. So, maaf to kari na kwa, but bulwanu agru. Only Allah says, Ghafar tu laka wala ubali. Ghafar tu laka wala ubali. Ghafar. Sometimes you need to deal with humans and taste how conditional their pardon is to know how unconditional the pardon of Allah is. Humans will give you a run around. Your own parents will give you a run around for forgiveness. Like, I'm sorry, how much more do I ask? And Allah said, I'll forgive you and I won't rave about it. That I forgave you, I forgave you, I forgave. I won't rave about it. I won't rave. It's done. It's over. It's done. My children know because I read this hadith and I just cry and cry. The words wala ubali, the passion I see in this hadith is just beyond me. My servant, I'll forgive you and it's done, it's finished, when it's over. You know, some people look on it, hambrawani bo adet. Doesn't end. So Suleiman alayhi salam had everything going. He was the man with Masale, call the jinnat here, call the birds here. Call the animals here. What's happening? He didn't start the blame game. He asked himself questions. The pious were those when they could not accomplish their goals. The first point of reflection was introspecting their own self. When he looked at himself, and of course they were noble, and he realized that there was nothing wrong with himself. Everything was in order in terms of obedience with Allah. And he was the Nabi of Allah. Then he said, Am kana min al ghaibin, bal kana min al ghaibin. Or is it that the bird is absent? We start off with everybody, and in the end it comes to ourselves. And that also if people direct it, otherwise we won't be brave enough to accept it. So, that and the last hadith that I wanted to share with you, and I said that, imagine in the house uh, if, 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 if the wife uh, endorses. And, and uh, reaffirms the role of the father to the children. And the father reaffirms the role of the mother to the children. Can you imagine the harmony of that house? The, 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 the mother is telling the children, but you people are not thanking your father enough. And Mawlana Masihullah Rahmatullah used to say, one of the duties of a mother is to enforce on the children or impress upon the children the hidden hand of the father. Because the child is growing up only seeing his mother do it. But he's not seeing that light is burning because someone is paying. He's not seeing that food is coming in because someone is working and toiling. He's not seeing this. It's hidden. It's intangible. It's invisible. And now this the child will even see the mother is buying also because she's swiping the card also. So according to him, my father is not even buying also, you know. So imagine, imagine if the esteem work. The mother is telling the child that the, your father is doing this. He's toiling. He's earning. The father is saying, you don't know when you were small, when your mother was nursing you, when your mother was pregnant with you. You don't know what your mother went through. So if there is this mutual spirit of complementing each other and saying it's a teamwork, that house will be paradise. That house will be paradise. So to conclude on that narration, when the Muhajirin migrated from Mecca to Medina, and then Nabi Sallallahu said, Inna ikhwanakum qad taraku al amwala wal awlad. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi the Ansar said, Amwaluna bainana qata'i, then our wealth is half to them. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Awa ghayra dhalik, why not something else? So they said, whatever it is, O Nabi of Allah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, uh, Join them in your plantation. And uh, you do the work, but divide the prophets. They just came fresh from Makkah. So they're not full into plantation. They don't have the know-how and the, the skill of it. And then you just, they said, it's done. It's done. It's fine. Nabi of Allah, we're happy with it. No issues. I mean, straight. So the Arabic proverb is, Rubba akhin lam talidhu ummuk. That you have some brothers in the world 
who are no less brothers to you than your actual brother, it's just that your mother didn't give birth to them. That's the proverb. If they are a real brother to you, it's just that you don't share the same mother. Otherwise, he's a brother. Not like a brother, he's a brother. So anyway, then the Ansar gave everything and they distributed. The Muhajirin had to work and they divided it. So the Muhajirin then said to Nabi Sallallahu you know, we came from Makkah, we sacrificed, we did, and we thought we toiled and we had great reward. But after we've seen the selfless nature of the Ansar, we think that now the reward is only theirs. We're not going to get anything. لَقَدْ خَشِينَا أَنْ يَذْهَبُوا بِالْأَجْرِ كُلِّهِ لَقَدْ خَشِينَا أَنْ يَذْهَبُوا بِالْأَجْرِ كُلِّهِ The narration of Muslim al-Ahmad. Oh, Nabi of Allah, we think. Nabi Sallallahu said, no, no, no. مَا دَعَوْتُمُ اللَّهَ لَهُمْ وَأَثْنَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْرِ you know what you do? You people need to mutually praise each other and make dua for one another. And Allah will give everyone the reward. The sign of a winning nation, a winning family, a winning mindset is mutual complementation. The sign of a losing individual, a losing family, a losing community, a losing society is the blame game. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to come out of that negativity, to rise above that accusation and blame game. It's going to happen and it's not going to help anyone. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah says that your book of deeds will be given to you. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسًا This is the Hadith Qudsi. Oh my servant, you are performing and I'm recording. When you come before me and you see Jannah, then scream out and say, all praise belongs to Allah. Hadith. Scream out, I'm adding from myself, but obviously that will be that moment of ecstasy and, and joy and euphoria. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ Leave the petty differences of this world. You come before Allah and you see it's written, Jahannam Allah forbid. The Hadith of Qudsi, Allah says, Blame none but yourself. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala atraf al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana hu fi l-akhirati hasana hu qina azab al-nar. O most kind, most loving, most gracious, most merciful Allah. All the brothers and the hundreds and thousands of sisters that have gathered and assembled and congregated. Allah, you reward each one of them, O oh Allah. Allah, you forgive our minor, our major, our collective, our individual sins, O oh Allah. Allah, each one that has come here has come here with their own baggage of problems, challenges, difficulties, Allah. Allah, you know their problems, our problems more than I can express it, Allah. Allah, we say it to you, not because you don't know, but because you've told us to ask you. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ مَا نُخْفِي وَمَا نُعْلِمُ Allah, you know what we express and we know you know what we reveal, Allah. Allah, which sister, whichever sister has whatever difficulty, Allah, through your grace, kindness and mercy, we ask you to alleviate her pain, difficulty and agony, Allah. Allah, from amongst us, anyone who has succumbed to any evil, vice or addiction, Allah, be it, be it uh, substance abuse, be it pornography, be it immorality, be it music, be it illicit relationships, be it disobedience to parents, be it other fantasies which are not in conformance with the dictates of Sharia. We ask you, O oh Allah, to rid their hearts and our hearts of these evil craves, O oh Allah. Allah, create in our hearts the repugnance, Allah. Create in our hearts the dislike of sin, Allah. Let us dislike it, Allah. Let us despise it. Let it be deplorable to us, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, those parents that are having a challenging time raising their children, O oh Allah, you make it easy for them, O oh Allah. Allah, you miraculously guide those children, Allah. Allah, you bring them home, Allah. And if they are in the streets and they are in the clubs and they are in the pubs, Allah, then we ask you, Allah, jerk them, but don't hurt them, Allah. Jerk them, but don't hurt them. Jerk them, but don't hurt them. Jolt them, but don't hurt them, Allah. Allah, take them out of the clubs and the pubs and the laps of strange women and dining with alcohol and haram, O oh Allah, and bring them home, Allah. As they left their parents crying, let them make their parents smile, O oh Allah. Allah, those from amongst our young boys and girls that are seeking partners and marriage, Allah. Allah, you pave the way and grant them good partners, O oh Allah. Allah, you make it easy for them. Those that are seeking employment and sustenance, you grant them employment and sustenance, O oh Allah. 
Allah, those of our parents that are alive, grant us the ability to serve them, O oh Allah. Grant us the ability to earn their du'as, O oh Allah. Make us amongst those fortunate people who can qualify for the inner du'as of our parents, O oh Allah. Allah, across the globe, the ummah is taken strain, Allah. The ummah has been battered, Allah. Allah, the night has become long, Allah. It's become dark, Allah. It's gone cold, Allah. It's gone windy, O oh Allah. It's gone gloomy, it's gone dark, O oh Allah. Allah, let the sun rise on this ummah, Allah. Let there be some rays of hope for this ummah, O oh Allah. Allah, internally, politically, financially, socially, morally, Allah, on every front, this ummah is being battered, O oh Allah. Allah, keep our faith, our, our faith firm, O oh Allah. Make it firm and keep it firm, Allah. Make our faith firm and keep it firm, Allah. Allah, faith has become so weak, so shakeable, so vulnerable, O oh Allah. Make us amongst those fortunate people, O oh Allah, as you have described in the Quran, Asluha thabitun wa far'uha fis sama. Asluha thabitun wa far'uha fis sama. اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله